Hey, good morning, happy people. I'm Robert Arrington. This is Deer Meat for Dinner, and we are up at my mom and dad's farm in Blackshear, Georgia. As a little bitty kid, we would always go up to Georgia, and we'd go squirrel hunting and deer hunting, and we would just enjoy family time together on the family farm. Well, I haven't been up here in many years, and this is the first time I've ever actually brought Sarah and the girls up here to mom and dad's place. And we're just having a good time. We don't have anything planned. We're gonna run into town right now, see if we can't buy Aria a little 22. I mean, we don't know what we're gonna find. We're gonna go searching at, at pawn shops and antique stores. We're gonna look around, we're gonna come back. We might do a little hunting. But more importantly, I wanna just introduce y'all to a part of my past. And I appreciate you being a part of it. Make sure it's on safety. There you go. One in the pipe, two in the magazine. We ready. This is what I grew up doing right here, y'all. And heck, I ain't scared. If he's right here in the middle of the yard, I'm shooting. We'll leave this for later. What's your name? Dylan. Dylan? All right, you guys. We just This is the first place we came to. It's called Average Joe's Pawn Shop. This is Dylan, and uh, and they got fishing poles right here. So, um, you need to pick you up one, honey. This is mine right here. Mine's already got the... Awesome. Taking everything. What are we fishing for? Here's my question. How much for the whole rack, just like this? All of it. 350. 350! See you, Dylan. Go. Thank you. We just rolled up here and they got Millennium uh, lock-ons, Millennium hang-ons. I love these jokers, so we're definitely getting one of these. Mm, that's for sure. 100%. Who's this, Dad? H? Yeah. Oh, easy now. All right. Hey, Cletus. Dad, I got you this to replace that other one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's nice. I ain't even seen it yet, and I know. Hold on. What's that thing right here? What? That's a cotter pin. So, oh, you can hang it and put that in it. Yeah, you hang you hang this thing, and then you you hang the tree stand on it. Yeah. There you go. We'll go hang this in a little bit, but here you have that. Watch you about to drop that. We're making ourselves a very high tech target. Just don't shoot any big guns while I'm sitting. <laughs> That's the bullseye. Okay. When you're aiming, I want you to aim right there. Okay? All right. That's going to be my target. Yes, it's going to be a target. Okay. All right. Because I don't know how to load it yet. <laughs> you're going to let me load it because you don't know how? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Do we pull it back and put it forward? Hey. Sorry, are you excited? Yeah. There you go. You're going to get up taller. No, get up. No, not about right there now. Can you see through this? No, I can. Okay, you can see through it. Can you see the X? Uh-huh. Okay, now the X has to be looking over there at that target. Okay. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is, wherever this X is, that's where you're shooting, okay? And that where I gotta pull the trigger? Okay, now, with a cricket, you have to pull this back now. Okay, now, when you pull the trigger this time, it's going to go off, it's going to shoot. Okay. This gun can hurt you very bad, so you always have to know where you're shooting. Okay? okay? Put your ear protection on, now let's go. Whenever you, when you see it, put the crosshairs 
put the crosshairs right on the box, right where you want it to shoot. You shot it! <laughs> that was your first time you ever shot a that, gun. It's like on a black circle. Yeah, you got it, that's awesome. <laughs> Can you believe that you shot? The number one thing is safety. You cannot play with this. Okay. You're only allowed to shoot with mommy and daddy. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. What's this for? This is to help you hold the gun. Okay. There you go. Get it up there. Don't touch the trigger yet. Get closer. Oh, now you're getting good. Now it's looking good. You're only going to get more stable. Man, that was a great made shot. The box tip over. That was a <laughs> great shot. <laughs> I made a box tip over a lot. I know, it's because you hit it. Here, can you get it? These are true deer feeders. Yeah, these are deer feeders. My friend Lee Lightsey told me about them. I actually met you up at the Harrisburg show. And then my dad, he's like, why did the deer eat out of your feeder so well, but they won't out of mine? I said, because you got the wrong feeder. Talk about a perfect little hidden gem right here. Hold on. There you go. Good. She's in place. It's tall enough that the raccoons can't grab it. It's got a lip here so that when the deer are eating, they don't pull it out on the ground. You get very little corn on the ground. It all stays where it's supposed to be. On my property back home, this is called the Castaways Feeder Protein Plus. It's a corn and soybean blend. It, it's made up of 18% soy, uh, 18 protein. This I'm not gonna mess around with you. My deer eat this better than anything I've ever fed them. It's actually hard to keep it in my feeders because they eat it so hard. Look at that. I don't know if there's more corn or more soybean, but together, it's 18% protein. Now, if you look, I put it far enough away from the trees so that the squirrels can't jump into it. On a rare occasion, a turkey will hop up here and grab some food out of it, but this is a professional deer feeder and it works year round. You wanna have a lot of deer? Take care of them year round. You'll have them in hunting season. We were just shooting with Aria and Aria wants to hunt. That's why it's so important to me to have her out here doing all the work when we're hanging tree stands, when we're filling feeders, when we're improving the property. Love you. Dad. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, baby. What are you connected to? I'm connected to this. See, now whenever Daddy climbs up the tree stand, I clip on down here. See this? There. Now I'm wearing a safety harness. So if I fall, I'm not going to get hurt, and I can make it home and give you another hug and a kiss. Every year people die falling out of their tree stands. And I gotta be honest, for many years I never wore a harness. But I've made it a point. Anytime I'm in a tree stand, clip on. There you go. The beautiful part of the day. First thing in the morning here. All the mist and fogs coming up off the pond. 
birds. You can see Arya's target out there on the side of the bank and fishing pole. We've been out there fishing. Dad's been working in the yard and it's just a magnificent way to end the year. This is one of my dad's food plots. Tons of deer use in it. Here in South Georgia, squirrel hunting is very, very popular. Not just amongst youngsters. Everybody squirrel hunts here. And it's late season. These squirrels get smart. A, every bird of prey in the world tries to catch them from above. Coyotes and bobcats catch them on the bottom. And then you got people running around with shotguns, 22s, trying to shoot them. So these little rascals are smart. So it just started to rain a little bit. So we hightailed it over here to one of my dad's deer stands. This is called Jake's stand. And uh, I actually, I brought an Arius Lucky 22. See what happens, y'all. Oh, there's a squirrel. Got him. <laughs> 75 yards with the old 22 Magnum Cricket. He ain't going nowhere. Big old fat cat squirrel. Got him. I have me one extra bullet right here just in case. Easy, easy, easy. Hold on. I got squirrels coming from everywhere. They need to make this gun easier to load. We're stacking them up, boys. We're stacking up. We got three. It's starting to rain. Hey, my goal was to get three. We got three. And uh, I don't want to get rained on out here. Although I am wearing my frog togs. Austin is not, and my camera is not. So I'm going to run, go grab the Polaris. We'll pick up our, our squirrels, and we out of here. Three of them, though, y'all. There's the second one. He just had to come check out what his buddies were up to. Next thing you know, he's part of lunch. He's part of the menu. There you go. 
cat squirrels, also known as gray squirrels. Huge part of the southern culture. People all over the country squirrel hunt. But I'm pretty convinced it's most popular down here in the southeastern United States. Look at this. This is one of my dad's food plots. Look at the deer tracks. You finally get out of bed? Yeah. There you go. Wow. Three squirrels. That's a lot. Guess what I got them with? Huh. Your gun. Mine? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I was a little boy, this is what I started out hunting, squirrels, okay? And all we're gonna do, take a little pocket knife and cut it. We're gonna take off his tail and we'll take off each of his little feet just like that. There's really not a lot of blood involved with all of this. And... Is there bones? Yeah, there's some. Get rid of that. Now we have just a little, a little chunk. Okay, now all you do is right on the top, right on the top. You can see, you just make a little cut right there on the top. <laughs> make one little cut just like that. And we're going to come. Is there a lot of blood? No, there's not a lot of blood. There's no blood? No. Okay. And when we're just, just like when we're taking off socks. Yeah, see that? that? See that? And there's virtually no blood. You just pull it off. Now we have a nice little squirrel. We'll rinse him off just like that. I want the tail. You want the tail? Okay, you can have the tail. But hey, this is this is just how we teach our kids what, what meat is. And when you understand what meat is, you understand what life is. And when you really understand what life is, you respect it. Um, hey. That looks like a fried chicken. Looks like a fried chicken, huh? Let's go cook. Welcome to Mom's Kitchen. I want to let you know we have the main food groups here. We've got Oreo cookies, potatoes, hot cocoa, Reese Puffs, Frosted Flakes, and oil. With that, you can make near about anybody happy. You want it like this so it lays flat. Then you can just salt it up. A little bit of uh, Lowry's garlic and some black pepper. There you go. Just like that. That joker seasoned up. Now, Mom, you do the rest. Now, for those of you wondering, this is precisely how I grew up. Just southern food. Whatever you hunt, whatever you kill, you cook and you eat. Right. It goes from the field to your belly. This is just a pit stop. And these little squirrels, they don't have any cholesterol in them. And no hormones and no junk food. No preservatives. No. The little vax was always my favorite. You wouldn't think so, but just a handful of squirrels will actually make a nice lunch. Oh, there's plenty here. Mm-hmm. You know, in a time like now, when we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic, eating healthy is actually a good thing. That's and I, good. I can assure you, if it runs around outside there in the fields and in the trees and flies in the air, it's better for you than something that was raised in a pen. Just trust me on that. It's all seared now, it's nice and brown. It's not done through and through, but it's seared. So we're gonna just put it in the pressure cooker. Got a little bit of water, probably just a couple cups in all your squirrel meat. Put it on really hot there and let it start boiling. Okay, so all of our squirrels cooking in there. 
Mom's gonna make the gravy in that cast iron skillet and she's gonna make her famous cornbread in this. How long have you had this frying pan? A pretty good long time. I've given you kids all my big ones. When you get older, they get heavier. <laughs> okay, when this gets hot, you don't, you don't, okay, now you can see the steam is building on this. And when it gets coming out a little more, then I'll put this barber on here, so. Okay. Hey, I got a question for all you. I know your mom and dad cook something for you, or you grew up eating something. What is something that you grew up eating that instantly brings you back, that you remember and is just awesome? That right there is Southern pan-fried cornbread. I guarantee, if you've never had it, it's delicioso. Just see if it'll, it'll, whoa! I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> When you're cooking with a pressure cooker, cooker, that's the most important thing in your kitchen. You've got to pay attention. And I don't, I never let any kids be running around in my kitchen that send them out in the yard to play. So we always had a, we had a choice as kids. Either go out in the yard and play or get whacked with a switch and then go uh, out in the yard and play. Whatever it takes. And I know there's a lot of you people that are like professionals with pressure cookers, but I'm not. And I always have little kids around, so I'm always trying to be really cautious with a pressure cooker. Pressure cooker's going. Mom's making cornbread. Now we're just going to let this cook for about 30 minutes, and we will see you then. It's been 30 minutes. She just killed the heat. Now we're going to show you how to relieve the pressure. There you go. Run some water over it. Doesn't need to be cool, cold water. Just run some room temperature water right over it. That's going to drop the pressure. And you can jiggle this around and make sure that there's no steam coming out. Okay, there it is. That's hot. That pressure cooker literally loosened everything up. See how that meat comes right apart? But before we start eating the meat, we want to use that juice to make gravy. When it gets warm, just start adding your flour A little bit more, about that much. And you want that flour to absorb all your oil. I'm gonna just pour this juice in there and stir it up. Over the a glass of water. It just cooks it to pieces. Thank you. And I don't have any onion, but onion, you can fry up an onion in here if you want. But you can see as we stir it, the meat just comes right off of the little bones. For those of y'all thinking we grew up rich with a silver spoon in our mouth, negative. This is how we grew up, but we were rich in family and love and you know that's we grew up understanding the meaning of family, the value of a dollar, what it means to work hard and go for go for it. You know, my dad was never scared, neither was my mom. We always was willing to take a risk, stick our neck out and just fight for what we what we wanted. Go over there and sit in your seat if you want to eat. All right, so this is just a typical meal that we would have growing up. We would have a little salad. It always have a little bit of hard boiled egg and some tomato in it. Enough for everyone to share. Have one? Yeah, of course. You'd take a piece of cornbread. 
The cornbread, you gotta use some real cane syrup and just put a dab of that on there. You can also add butter, but man, I really like cane syrup. Then, take you some rice. Now this is rice that we cooked last night and is left over. And as kids, we ate a whole bunch of leftover meals. Because you didn't waste anything, you only had so much. Take that, and you're gonna put that right on top of your, right on top of your rice, a little gravy, and that's dinner. There you go, babe. It's really awesome having you come up to mom and dad's place. Yep. This is also something we did a lot as kids, pray at the table. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. And I pray for each and every person watching this video today. Lord, I pray that you keep your hand upon them and guide them and lead them graciously into 2021. Lord, thank you for keeping us safe and allowing us this wonderful family and all these blessings. Lord, please nourish this food to our body and forgive us of all of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. I'm digging right in. I've been looking forward to this since I got here. I don't think I've ever had squirrel in my life. Well, you're about to fall in love. Look, take that bite right there. No, I'm gonna, I want my white with my rice. You would think it's deer meat. Mm-hmm. Mm. You would think that it's deer really meat. It yeah. tastes like... No cholesterol. It tastes like... Um, what does that taste like? It tastes like something really familiar. Healthy. Yeah. But mm. like a stew, like a... Yes. Crock pot meal or something. Waddle? Mm. See that? And then it just, it comes apart. I'm digging right in. I am shocked right now how good this is. Mm-hmm. Wow, I would've never expected squirrel. A lot of people would've been, went hungry if they didn't have squirrel and different stuff you could go out and kill. Mm-hmm. Just like 2020, this show's coming to an end. So is 2020. Oh, wow, yeah, today. Yeah, today's it. Wow. That's it. For those of y'all wondering, I do not like the yolk of a boiled egg. Sarah loves the yolk. Oh, but the full. I didn't <laughs> right? Only half of it. But this is it, y'all. This is this is how we grew up. I wanted to end this year with a video showing you guys where I came from. My mom, my dad, and Austin. We know for a fact those three had COVID. <clears throat> for those of you out there who have experienced it one way or the other, I pray for you guys and I hope we all get through this together. Um, but that's all I got for today. Can I say something? Yes. In 2021, we have no idea what it's going to bring. But instead of always wanting a blessing yourself, try to be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. If you have a neighbor that is by themselves and you have extra cooked, fix them a plate and take it over and check on them. God bless and Happy New Year. That was, great. That was very sweet. I couldn't have ended that any better. Love you guys. Is that any good? Yeah, it's real good. But, uh. Y'all eat it all? Not all of it. <laughs> all right, baby. We are. Going until next year.